So much of the conversation around the NRA and guns happens online or among politicians and lobbyists. But tonight we're trying something different. We wanted to see what happens when we take away the cover of Facebook and Twitter and sit people with the strongest opinions at the same dinner table. So many issues divide us. Yet so few of us are actually willing to sit down and talk to each other. That is where food comes in. I'm Lauren Zakalik. I know a good meal brings people together. So we're inviting strangers to sit down, share a meal, and dig in on their differences. It's time we come to the table. It's time for Breaking Bread. We've invited four strangers to Cafe Momentum in downtown Dallas. Well, I am in the kitchen with Chef John Mercer. It's a socially conscious restaurant that transforms the lives of at-risk youth through hands-on experience. While the chef puts the finishing touches on our meal, let's meet our dinner guests. My name is Aaron Brown. I am a teacher for Fort Worth ISD, and I'm 51 years old. I'm Soraya Kali. I'm a community activist and organizer, and I'm 44. My name is Christopher Trevino. I am a field operations manager for a staffing agency, and I'm 32 years old. My name is Kristen Williams, and I'm currently a stay-at-home mom. I'm 37 years old from Frisco. Wow, let's try that. The lamb is pretty awesome. Our guests take their seats at the table and dig in on the food and today's topic. I just would like to start by going around the table to gauge where everybody's mindsets are. And I want to know what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the term NRA? The first thing that comes to my mind is, uh, you know, probably wrong voice. They're doing a lot of things for gun rights, but maybe they're not doing it in the right way. What do you think, Kristen? What do you think about? When I think of the NRA, I think of protection. If the issue is safety and rights, um, that's certainly not the message that I'm getting as, as, a, as a mother. Don't you see a correlation, though, between the amount of money that the NRA um, makes towards a certain candidate ter uh, or um, certain people in office? and the way that they vote in guns, and in, in when it comes to gun That's legislation. It's no different than any other politician, though. It's whoever, whoever supported them is the way they're going to vote. You know, it's no secret that interest in guns has been boosted by mass shootings. According to the Nonpartisan Center for Responsive Politics, in the two weeks after the Parkland shooting, donations to the NRA of $200 or more doubled from the previous two weeks. Now, on the other side, we've seen Parkland students lead huge protests for gun control. Do you think that a ban on military-style weapons is How the answer? How are you going to ban military weapons? You, there's no way. They're already out there. So to think that these criminals are going to walk into a police station and turn them in is ridiculous. I don't know if banning assault weapons is going to change everything and make everybody and stop mass shootings. There's no way anybody could know that. But I do know that something has to be done. The vast majority of gun violence in America happens with handguns. Why not ban handguns? It's not about the guns causing the majority of the crimes. It's okay. the kinds of crimes that are being caused by a certain small faction of guns. It's a knee-jerk reaction. They want, okay, let's get rid of all guns. Let's just get rid of everything. To be fair, I've not heard the argument of let's get rid of all I have. guns. But it, it, I have. But it, it's a slippery slope. You get rid of one, mm -hmm. then you get rid of another, yeah. then you get rid of another. So, of course, school safety is top of mind right now for parents all over the country. And one of the proposals by the president that's also backed by the NRA is to arm more teachers. Erin, you are a public school teacher. Do you think that we should be arming teachers? I think so. I've taught at schools where we didn't have a resource officer, we didn't have somebody armed. First off, I don't think that necessarily putting hand, guns in the hands of teachers is the right move. I think maybe, you know, expanding the school resource officer so it, program. It, something terrible could happen that would be made worse by a teacher having a gun. Would you not feel safer knowing that it's the law-abiding citizen, your son's teacher, that is the one that has the gun versus the crazy lunatic that's gonna come into the building and shoot everyone. I wouldn't feel safer, no, because so many things go wrong when, when people are shooting guns. We often hear the phrase, <laughs> it's not a gun issue, it's a mental health issue. We have to address, address all of these things together because they're, they're part and parcel. Um, universal background checks would help us access someone's mental health information so that we would be able to uh, 
figure out if they're if they're able to even have guns. So you have postpartum depression. You go see your doctor, and the doctor says, "Well, you know, you're suffering for depression. Let me give you some pills." And there, it's on your record. And then later on, point. five, ten years down the line, you want to get a gun for whatever reason, and your medical history comes up. Hey, well, I think that there would be had, standards in place to indicate that, I you know, would, a depression, you know, an, a, a one depressive episode is... who decides is, these Who standards? decides that? Who, who makes the grand decision of, you know, what mental health passes? And that is so, talk and, about a slippery slope. I think that having this discussion is just healthy discourse. You know, I wish we could do it, you know, more often without the vitriol and the, and the hate that comes along with it. The solutions and the conversations are in the middle. That is where we go forward. So did everybody get enough food? Yes. Everybody stop. You There's still dessert, by the way. There's still dessert. dessert. <laughs> One more last toast, guys. I got a little bit of water. Okay. We can do this. Oh. To talk. <laughs> <laughs> to conversation. To progress. Yeah, uh -huh. to progress. We hope some of this got you and your family talking. For more on the conversation that happened at this dinner table, head to the homepage on WFAA.com. I should tell you this uh, discussion continues tonight.